It should have been another perfect day in Alderton, but the day was different. And nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny Leclou was dead. All right, we are here with a very, very, very long-awaited banger in Jenny Leclou, Detective Wu. Now, some of you guys might recall we checked out of a demo of this about a year and a half ago, it feels like, and it was awesome. The game looked amazing, the art style, very witty, very charming, broke the fourth wall. And unfortunately, after that, the game just went silent. No news for a while. In about a week and a half ago, out of nowhere, hey, um, we've released. And, I mean, I was excited for it, but at the same time, a little misfortune had just come out too, so I was playing that. And the unfortunate thing is that they're very similar games and that they're both adventure games. We have two female characters as well. They both break the fourth wall. They're both, you know, in a way like mystery, dark mysteries, but with a bit of light hardness to them. So this came out just as Little Misfortune had come out and I was thinking to myself, man, I just think Little Misfortune has a bit more hype because of the Frambo game prior to that. I have finished with Little Misfortune, so I do have some time in the schedule now. We're going to check this out here today. If you guys enjoy it, want me to do an entire playthrough or do a couple more videos, let me know in the comments. Let me know by leaving a thumbs up. All right, we got our first choice. Creepy or a totally normal situation here happening? Well, I mean, should we do bad choices again if we do an entire playthrough? I kind of enjoyed bad choices. We shall try to do bad choices. Creepy. Oh, we got to hold it down. All right. Yeah, that, that does kind of make it creepy. Oh, I'm in control of this character. All right. So as you can see already, like, the, the art style, so good. Like, I just unfo- I hope this game doesn't get overshadowed, is what I'm thinking. Assuming it's as good as I'm hyping it up to be, but... Everything that I played in the demo, I thoroughly enjoyed. It just, you know, went silent for so long, and unfortunately, not, not only the silence I feel hurted, but just the fact that the time it released at the same time, too. Accelerate, alright, now we... Okay, we're using... I'm using a key, uh, a gamepad. I tried using keyboard and mouse, but when I was in the main menu, I wasn't getting a mouse control. I think everything was done through keyboard, so I was like, yeah, hey, you know, we'll just go with the gamepad, I guess. I'm very intrigued that we're playing as this figure right here, too, because, you know, we we're supposed to be playing as Jenny LeClue. Detective Wu. What is this, eh? We have our first puzzle already. So, I'm gonna assume we have to probably line up our lines here with, uh, uh -huh, of course. I have pressed the button. Yo, oh, what the hell is that? Saw the red things at first and I was like, yo, that's some creature from the abyss, but it seems to be like a tower of some kind. Yo. Oh, it's like an elevator, all right. What? Who? Oh, I must have dozed off. Perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. What do you say, Rufus? Hey, Rufus ain't have any of that right now. Yes, yes, quite right. Better get back to work. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier. I'll come back to the prologue later. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. Finkelstein residence? Oh, hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Okay, patch me through then. Two hours later. Richard? Oh, yes, yes, I got it. I, I did. And my answer is no. I understand that, but... Yes, of course, but... No, no, no. Nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. It goes against everything my books stand for. No, not yet, but... If I could just... Please, listen to what I'm saying. Okay. 
So as I understand it, he is kind of like, um, his series is like dwindling, not enough interest, and he's got to make a drastic change to the story. Which um, I guess, well, I don't know, if you don't know much about it, I don't want to spoil it for you just yet. Let's see here, so we got to look around. Well, it's me again, Arthur. K. Finkelstein. And here we are at book 38 of the Jenny LeClue series. Her most joyful adventure yet. Thank you to old and you Jenny LeClue fans out there. You have both been incredibly supportive to answer your questions, despite any rumors you may have heard. Of course, the Jenny books will continue. As long as there is ink in my pen and ribbon in my tip typewriter. Yes, it will be more of the same. I refuse to change my formula. Arterton will always be a safe and happy place. WRONG! Dear Arthur, hope all is well. Afraid I've got some bad news, old chum. There's no easy way to say it, so I've attached the latest book sale numbers. Nowadays, young readers want more mystery and danger. You're losing it with Jenny's increasingly timid and repetitive adventures. One bit of good news, it's too late for the stores to cancel their orders for the next book. So we're going to give you one last go and see if you can breathe some life into the old girl. We want you to try a proper murder mystery. Start killing people off. Add some drama. The bottom line is, if you don't step it up, I'm afraid it's a case of Jenny and the last hurrah. All right. We are now determined. Boring. Predictable. Ha! If it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. It should have been another perfect day in Alderton, but the day was different. And nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny Leclou was dead. Her skin was pale, her eyes glassy and frozen. What cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective. Oh, she's a zombie. No, no, no. Never move the victim. Mrs. Leclue, she's doing it again. Jenny Leclue, you are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. Julie Leclue, former detective, teaches dumb students, terrible cook, great mom. But he's doing it wrong. As wonderful as it would be if Vogue cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of dead without their help. When only the evidence laid before us. We build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time. Until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. Vital evidence could be lost. Uh, so sorry, Mrs. LeClue. <laughs> okay, you've all had a chance to study the body. Who can postulate how she met her demise? Oh, me, me. I think it was an accident. Yeah, she obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped on the wet floor. And cracked her head open like an egg. And then she bled to death. Really? How can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood around her head. Y yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Actually... You're both wrong. What? It was cold-blooded. Murder. Murder? Don't be ridiculous. Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone is was else was even here. Oh yes, there is. It was murder, and I can prove it. The case of the dead lab assistant. All right. So this has like a really like intricate like. I'm hoping maybe like an intricate like detective puzzle portion to it as well. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Seemingly insignificant details could provide a vital piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. 
Then she'd analyze the data. And finally, deduce the real cause of that. All right, so we gotta look for eight clues here, huh? All right. Let's look around. Where could we start? Apparently, all right, so we could, whatever highlights up we could interact with. So let's start off over here. Hmm, apparently got mud? Approximately eight sizes too big. <laughs> and covered in mud. Okay, I got the mud portion. Apparently she does have big ass feet. So that part is good. We have obviously pool of water. The floor is wet and slippery, but also immaculately clean. Okay. What else can we find here? Stitching? Jenny's blue sweater was scruffy and quite uncomfortable. But her grandmother had knitted it, and so it was her favorite. The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. That was a clue as well. All right. Intriguing clue, but sure. We got our blood as well. There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. Right. Anything about the fingers? Fingernail stuff? Nothing? All right. Well, we do have coffee. Spilled. Mr. Bean. The ends justify the beans. Cute. What a waste of perfectly good coffee. Jenny's love for coffee was almost as strong as her passion for crime solving. Chalky green residue on the rim. Smells like burnt matches. Hmm. I thought it'd be like it'd be like lipstick, but I guess green lipstick. I mean, I'm not saying it's unheard of, but it is fairly uncommon. Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. There were her window to the world, and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. What is this green stuff over here? Oh, okay. So, the green chalky thing. So, she was the one drinking the coffee then. The victim has a green smudge on her lips. It's not lipstick. Right, right. Alright, so now we're just looking for one more. And of course, it's probably the most difficult one to find. Oh, the hair clip. Okay. It wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was the exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. She'd worn it ever since. I've seen enough. Time to wrap this case up. All right. How do I know the victim didn't slip? Jenny has a meticulous record keeper, noting every relevant clue in her trusty journal. A great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots. I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident. Now I just need to prove it. Okay, so how do I know the victim didn't slip? The victim is wearing giant muddy boots. The floor is wet and squeaky clean. Not a mark on... Oh. There it is. These two contradict one another. The sweater is old and looks issued. It has nothing to do with the slipping. The victim is lying in a fresh pool of sticky blood. Gross. I mean, that would make sense if you cracked your head open. The victim is wearing thick rim glasses with a strong prescription. It's got to be these two. They contradict each other. So, let's start off with that one first. One, and I'm going to assume that one as well. Hold. Okay. Am I right? The victim's boot boots are filthy. They should have left big muddy footprints on the floor. So where are they? Exactly. Someone else is here. But who? Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. Mm. Solved, all right, we got it. I mean, that wasn't a hard one, Falcon, but you know what? You give me credit. We're not done yet, though. What was the real cause of death? Okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? All right, well, um, I'm gonna say obviously the mouth, right? That was the weird stuff. Cause the pool of blood still shouldn't really be much of a, I mean, it's not a cause of death, really. Wet floor, obviously we already established she did not slip. Body position, the victim is lying face up. Doesn't really matter. It's gotta go, boom, and go over there, please. Boom, make a deduction. Oh, right, hold it. Poison. Coffee, deadly but delicious, and the smell of burnt matches. There's a green residue in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. It smells of burnt matches, phosphorus, also found in common garden fertilizer. Hmm.
The same green mark is on the victim's lips. Her coffee was spiked with fertilizer. It's quite a way to <laughs> kill someone or poison them. Fertilizer, huh? Someone clearly wanted her dead. All right, another pat on the back for you, boy. Ah, the case of the dead lab assistant. Gone before her time. Was it poison? Yes. A blow to the head? Yes. An accident? Certainly not. Note footprints, an unshattered mug. She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is a story of a scorned ex-lover. Jenny. The gardener, enacting his revenge. Jenny. A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins. That's quite enough, thank you. Well, what happens to the gardener? Is this gonna be on the test? Remember class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. This is how we catch a killer. But, but what's the point of all this? Y yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arden in years. Every town has a dark side. Even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. So have a light lunch. Alright, so far so good, I'm liking this already. The students need to think for themselves, Jenny. That's why they're here at Gumbolt, to learn. I just figured we'd all had places to go. Speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body, Mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! Oh, wait, before you go... I have something for you. Cool, what is it? If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? The Leclus didn't simply hand each other presents. They hid them. It was a family tradition, and Jenny had developed a sixth sense for finding them. With her trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. Alright. So, let's see here, um... Oh. Oh, oh! Yo! Alright. So, move around, search, and exit. Gotcha. Alright, so let's see here. Oh, oh, I think we have already found the culprit. Let's just see if there's anything else over here hidden around. No? Okay. Well, I think we found the culprit already. Nice. I'm liking the art direction of the game. A new journal! To Jenny, there was nothing better than the aroma of a fresh lettered notebook. It smelled like mystery. Without missing a beat, she did what any detective worth his salt would do. She decorated it. I love nerds. Oh, okay. So we could just, um, hey, look at that. Change the sticker. What else do we got? Right there. Okay. That works for me. A new journal meant new adventures. She imagined all the thrilling cases that would soon fill its pages. And on the first page, her mother had written an inscription. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. I wanted to talk about, um, to say, um, we're gonna have to talk about the birds and the bees. Somewhere in the back of Jenny's highly caffeinated brain, an alarm bell was ringing. Her mom was hesitating. What could be causing her to act so out of character? Huh. Tap? Sure. Well, what am I tapping? Just tapping some things to check. Okay, sure. Limited eye contact. Watery. Defensive body language. Missing ring. Yo. I like the entire um, detective mechanics are coming into this too. Crossed arms, furrowed brow. Jenny saw it coming from a mile away. Her mother was about to get... emotional. I've really gotta go? No, Jenny, wait. I need your help. What? Really? Jenny couldn't believe her ears. It was extremely unusual for her mother to ask for her help. It must be something very important. Tracing the steps of a deranged killer. A cold case that only someone with Jenny's expertise could solve. I've misplaced the student's essays on decapitation. See if you can find them for me before you leave. 
I have to run. Wow. The case of the misplaced papers. Are you sure you want to trust me with such a complex task? I have no doubt you'll be able to find them. They're around here somewhere. Jenny was unsure if her mother was unable to detect sarcasm, or just really good at ignoring it. Fine, let's go ahead and do this thing, why not? Okay, Mom, I'll find them before I leave. On one condition. Yes? You have to let me help grade them. One of Jenny's favorite pastimes was grading papers. Nothing pleased her more than giving a big shiny F to an overconfident student. Don't push your luck. Please? Mm. Okay. Yes! Find the papers and go straight home. But I'm meeting Keith tonight. No buts, remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm still feeling the effects of being poisoned for your class. Well then, I have the perfect antidote. You're staying with your cousin this weekend, and you still need a pack. Ah, oh, this again. Look, I've considered your offer, Mom, and I'm gonna have to decline. I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'll be back late tonight. There's some meatloaf in the fridge. Let's question the logic. So you don't trust me to take care of myself this weekend, but you do trust me to fix dinner and not burn the house down? Jenny LeClue, it's been a difficult week. Could you please just do what you're told for once and stop asking questions? Fine. And try to stay out of trouble. When do I ever get into trouble? I think that face says it all, really. Well, guys, we're out of time. I'm going to wrap it up here for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments. Let me know by leaving a thumbs up on the video. We'll come back and do some more. If you guys are enjoying it enough, we could do the entire playthrough. Have this replaced with Misfortune because we are done with that one. So let me know how you feel about this one. And that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. All the information will be down below. If we come back, we have to find the missing papers. And let's not forget, Jenny LeClue will die. I'll catch you guys next time.